Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at the all new 2021 and a half Cedar Creek Champagne 38 EL fifth wheel. This is a triple slide out rear living room fifth wheel. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you through the inside of the RV, come back to the outside of the RV, then we're going to close it all up, show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now up inside the all new Cedar Creek Champagne fifth wheel. As you've seen on the floor plan, it was up a few seconds ago. Triple slide out rear living room, one bedroom RV. So we're gonna start down here in the kitchen living room area, kind of spin our way through the RV here. So starting off here, we are looking at the big super slide that is on the door side of the RV. You have nice, large panoramic window view overlooking your campsite area. And all of those windows do open. Now the windows in this RV are deep tent safety glass windows and they're also dual pane windows. So there's two layers of glass with a little bit of dead air space in between kind of thing. So that's going to help you full timers, extended stay kind of customers that are camping out in colder weather and basically it'll help with some a little bit of insulation because you don't have uh, you know the cold air of the outside immediately contacting that one piece of glass but also it helps with condensation issues and stuff as well. So nice improvement for the RV window. There is an electric outlet on both sides of the dinette there. So you got one on the left part of the wall, one on the middle part of the wall there, along with USB charger ports in that middle section between the windows. And one of the light switches is also there as well. Over here, beside the window over here, you do have a light switch, and then you also have the second awning controls. This unit has the optional second awning, and that is where those controls are. So that runs it in and out, and also the wind sensor setting as well. Now, the dinette is kind of a freestanding dinette, I guess you'd say, as far as it doesn't have legs impeding your legs. However, it is attached to the wall, um, so it just kind of hovers up above you a little bit. Now that table does extend out, so there's a leaf which is laying on the ground currently, uh, but there's a leaf extension there that you could use if you need. Two traditional chairs that you're seeing here, which do have storage in them also. And you have two fold-up chairs as well, which are currently stored underneath the bed. Now they do these nice valance over top of the windows. And these are hardwood uh, stained valances. And they have a glass insert right here. And then there's actually an LED light strip up inside there. Dual day night blinds back here you have the powered theater seat so you have some storage and cup holders in the middle along with USB charger port as well back across the rear of the sofa you have your height of bed sofa this flips out to basically a queen-size bed, so you could sleep a couple extra guests here. There's still room to walk around the island and everything also. Up top, you have some overhead cabinets, and the middle section does kind of protrude out some, giving you a little more depth right there. Panning on up top a little bit further here, you have a 120-volt ceiling fan, not a 12-volt version. And you can see those black squares in the air in the middle up there. Those are air conditioning return vents. So you don't see the big square. Um, so that is kind of nice. That air conditioner is quieter than the traditional big square version you see. And I just want to kind of show you also while we're talking on the air conditioner here. This one has all three ACs on it. Two are standard, third is an option, but you come in here to your HVAC system, 
and we're gonna hit the cool button, cools and auto for the living room. I'm gonna turn on the air just so you can somewhat hear it. Um, again, it's uh, you know, a little bit quieter than some of the other versions. I don't know how well the mic's gonna pick it up or not, but just a little bit nicer air conditioning system, the Dometic Whisper Quiet Air. So we're basically standing directly below it, um, using the phone mic, which kind of picks up noise from everywhere. It's not a bullet mic like I normally use, but I uh, just wanted to kind of give you guys an idea on what it sounds like here. And over here across from us, we do have your electric fireplace. And it's basically a fancy electric space heater. It's about a 5,000 BTU electric heater. There's some storage up above, so you could put something like a Blu-ray player, video game system, uh, DVD player, whatever you want to put in there, satellite box, cable boxes, all that good stuff. Your IRV technology radio is also right there, and that has a uh, HDMI input along with a USB charger built into it. Two speakers facing directly at us here, and then there's also two speakers outside as well. Now the TV, big flat screen TV, they're currently using Insignia TVs. This is uh, on a swing arm. You can see it kind of pulled out there in the picture that popped up. There is storage back in behind there. The overhead cabinets up above there as well. So you got some more storage there. And also you can kind of see these blinds here. Spinning on around here, looking toward the front of the RV. There is an electric outlet on the side of the island right here. Now the front of the island changed up as well, so a little bit different look there. Little LED light strip, which is actually attached to the bottom of the countertop, kind of shining down on that. But it kind of has that seashell effect look to it. Now the counter itself also got bigger. It got wider and deeper, so they wanted to give you more counter space than what the old model actually had. So that also changed up. High rise uh, spring sprayer faucet there. And then you do still have the about 70, 30 sink difference, I guess. Under mount stainless sink. But they went to these uh, little roll up uh, strainer things here. So they do not have the old matching hard solid surface countertops like they used to. Uh, so they did do away with that. A lot of people were saying they didn't have any place to store them or didn't like having to deal with trying to do something with them when they were doing dishes and things. And it was just a few extra pounds of weight that wasn't necessarily needed with the RV. So they did away with them. Down here is four drawers with full extending ball bearing drawer guides and they are soft closed drawers as well. Over on the left side, you have some storage down below, along with the little uh, flip down sponge holder door drawer thing up there. Over here, you have the Insignia oven. This is currently the largest oven without going to a full residential oven that they offer. And you have four burners on top, Again, big oven down below, has the glass front, has uh, plenty of cook space in there. There's also a little pull-out drawer below that. And storage in around it as well. So you got two drawers up top here, some storage down on the left, and then you also have uh, two drawers down on the right as well that are built into that cabinet door. There's an electric outlet on both sides of the uh, stove here. So you could set coffee pots or toasters or whatever you need to set right there. Overhead cabinets around the microwave area there. Now standard is a microwave. This customer chose to order it with the convection oven also, which basically allows you to cook electronically or microwave either one. And then obviously you have your big fancy oven down here. So you can do multiple cooking you know, arrangements here, depending on what you want to do. 
on over to this section here there is kind of a pantry area here which is instead of doing shelves they did three pull out drawers I kind of like that so you can get the things in the back a little bit easier there's also an electric outlet inside of there as well you have the uh, drawer down below and a little door down here for cabinetry as well and there's also a little wine cooler here if you do like that or you can put something else in there but you do have the little wine cooler large refrigerator here now this refrigerator is a residential refrigerator works off the inverter system when you're driving down the road so basically the battery power gets transferred into 120 volt electric from the inverter allowing that to operate few batteries definitely helps obviously the solar panel helps charge it while you're driving down the road your truck is also supposed to help charge the battery system while you're driving down the road so multiple ways that the battery system gets charged while the refrigerator is trying to drain it uh, storage up above the refrigerator as well ice maker built in also Down below here, you have a little cabinet area, a couple drawers, the pull-out double waste uh, basket here, and then another kind of hidden drawer up there also. Some overhead cabinet space there. And then kind of panning up a little bit, you can see the middle air conditioner, because again, this was ordered with the third AC, so that's where those vents go right there, return vents. I'm going to back up here a little bit more. You can also see the little infinity light. It's kind of cool, a little decorative light there. Over on the left, you have some more pantry area. And that's probably close to six inches deep, roughly. On the uh, counter space here, there is some USB charger ports and an electric outlet back there on the left side. Now I got out some boxes here. I just wanted to kind of show you uh, what some of this stuff is. This part right here, this is the tire pressure monitoring system right here. I don't know how well you guys can see this, but this basically would attach to a little suction cup, stick it to the window of the truck. The tires shoot a signal to this, letting you know what's going on with your tires while you're driving down the road. So this is standard with the RV. Now over here we have the optional four camera security system. This is by Furion, so you have your seven inch monitor and the backup observation camera system here. There would be two of these which are side cameras, you'll see when we get out there looking down the side of the camper. And then this one here which goes over the entry door looking down over your steps and you could bring that monitor from the truck into the camper plug it in if you want and kind of see around your camper while you're you know in here doing what you're doing down here you have a little electric outlet down there along with your uh, fire extinguisher large grab handle here next to the entry door to help you get in and out one of the light switches. Now, these light switches is part of the new Firefly system. These are just little soft touch button lights you kind of see here. Uh, when we turn them off, just hit the button. Real simple. Now, these light switches are technically battery operated. They shoot a signal to the Firefly system. So there's a battery in behind here that's supposed to last two years, but you do have to eventually replace them. These right here, there's no wiring behind here. These things actually, uh, a little tough to do, but they will actually pop off the wall and you can move them wherever you want. Now, obviously if you do do that, there's gonna be a couple screw holes in the way, uh, so you'd have to touch that up. But these do pop off and you can kind of move them if you want. Down here, pop up a little picture so you can see this a little better. But your electric box, your propane leak detector, your dustpan vac and central vac are all down there. They also have some little LED accent lighting across the step. Now we'll 
zoom up in here, pop up a picture of this too, but you do have a coat closet down here. And then up here is gonna be your control area. So here again, we have our air conditioners. We're gonna go ahead and turn that off. That takes a second and it'll shut down and quiet up. Slide buttons, lighting system. There's a master on off light switch, which turns off almost every light in the RV. Um, so you just hit that and it shut down just about everything. We do have a couple lights there. That's the microwave light, the oven lights, and the little pendant lights in the back. But for the most part, we just killed almost everything in the RV by one button. Hit the button, turn them all back on. Pretty cool little system. Now, you can control them individually as well. I know you guys probably can't see this because of the glare off the screen, but individual light buttons here. Go back to the home screen. I got my battery condition, generator start stop. This unit you'll see when we get outside was ordered with a generator. We have our water pump, 12 volt tank heaters for winter camping. We have our uh, monitor panel here for our holding tanks. So, and these holding tanks, by the way, this is a little bit fancier modern system. It does not have probes that are drilled through the side of the holding tank. Um, so this kind of bounces some sound wa sine waves off whatever it does off the liquids and stuff that are in there so you don't have to worry about toilet tissue and stuff getting stuck to a probe like you do in the old cheaper system um, back here to the hvac setup here uh, again three air conditioners so you can control those on and off individually mm -hmm. Your furnace control is also here, and this customer ordered this with the optional heat pump on the main AC. So you can turn that on and have a heat pump as well. So this unit has the fireplace that we've seen down here. It has the heat pump on the lower air conditioner here. And then you'll see when we get up in the bedroom, it has a electric wall heater option that's up there. So this thing has three electric heat systems plus the propane system to kind of do what it needs to do. Plus you have 12 volt heat pad uh, tank heaters as well. Um, solar panel system, it comes standard with one solar panel, 30 amp charger system here. Uh, this customer ordered his with two additional solar panels. You'll see that on the uh, roof when we get outside. Neat little setup. Uh, one other thing that I do sometimes forget to mention, there is a little settings section here where you can come in and kind of dim the screen up or down and kind of do what you need to do. Change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius if you want. Um, there is also a mobile app to control some of this stuff too. Uh, part of the energy management system and the ceiling fan light switch there ceiling fan on off switch because it doesn't actually have a light on it pretty cool bathroom love this bathroom setup here compared to a lot of the other brands that are models um, eight drawers in here along with some storage on both sides tons of floor space in here to get in and out of the shower bathroom area get dressed without having to kick people out of the rv um, so it's kind of nice i like the bathroom big area here there is on the back part of the wall down there on the right by the counter, you have an electric outlet and the controls for the on-demand water heater over there. Some robe hooks here, the nicer, more oblonged porcelain toilet. One piece fiberglass shower with the sit down seat. Triple sliding glass door. And you also have the skylight up above. It does have a nice shower head, but they uh, have kind of a standard shower hose, I guess you'd say. Uh, so nothing real fancy on that portion of it. Over here is your little linen closet area. And there is also another turbo exhaust fan to help push all that moisture from a nice hot shower out the RV. Over on the side over there, you do have another electric outlet, the controls for that nice turbo fan, and a light switch. And you can also see you have a sliding pocket door there, which kind of slides back and hides into the wall. 
hallway window there even has the LED lights built into that. And day-night roller shades on this one as well. Up this way, we're into the bedroom. Bedroom has a swing door on it. All vinyl floor throughout the coach, except for the little bit of carpet down on the uh, big slide down there. Now, they do offer carpet as an option in the bedroom and the downstairs living room section, if you do want carpet. Huge bedroom. This is one of the biggest bedrooms I've ever seen in an RV. Um, this is super nice. We have a king size bed, plenty of room to walk around the whole area in here. All right, so let's get to this part here real quick. Again, king size bed. There's nightstands on both sides of the bed. There's also a shelf down there and a little area where you could stash some stuff also below that shelf. There is the overhead shelf above the window. You have night shades on both windows. The little directional reading lights here have a little push button to push them on and off. And you can also turn them blue. A little mood lighting. USB charger ports on both sides of the bed. So you each get your own electric outlet and USB charger ports on your side of the bed. Dresser area here, you have seven, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine drawers. Top drawers are a little bit smaller drawers, but they all have full extending ball burn drawer guides. Little LED lighting below there. Now this feature I really like. This is kind of cool. A little bit of hidden space here, but this actually hinges up and you have a little separate space there. Electric outlet there as well. TV mounted on the wall. Next to the TV is the optional electric bedroom wall here. Over on the side there you have another window, it does open, and down below that you have a little sit down bench. Below that bench is also some hidden storage. Big mirrors all the way across the front here. Pretty cool set, uh, set up there. Now you do have quite a bit of shelf space over here as well. You can also see the King Wi-Fi router system there. Vinyl floor in there as well. We're going to slide these doors over out of the way here real quick so you can kind of see what's going on over on this side. And revealing behind this is the side-by-side -side washer dryer option. It's pretty cool. It does not take up near as much space as a lot of the models where they do a stackable setup. So this is definitely a win for me. Still get all your crossbar hanging. There's roughly uh, almost eight feet of hanging bar space, probably about seven and a half feet roughly, I'd say. Um, so you got quite a bit of hanging space, a lot of shelf space in there, a couple lights in there, but you can walk right on in here and do what you need to do. Obviously there's nothing hanging in here, so it's not that big a deal, but a lot of room. I can just walk right on into this closet. This is pretty cool. this side of the bed as well. The bedroom air conditioner returns here. And this customer also ordered the uh, satellite dish box, satellite dish system from the factory. And that puts this box right here for this TV. And you can kind of see it's called the Wally. -E. 
this is through uh, Dish Network, if I remember correctly. And there's another box that was um, behind the TV downstairs as well. But super cool bedroom for an RV. This thing is huge. Even got a little robe hook thing back there behind the door. And I like how they did put a little bit of decorative stuff here to kind of hide some of the framework. It's not quite as fancy as the Riverstone version, which is the next step up from this. But it's got a ton of cool features for the money. Definitely love the new Cedar Creek Champagne look. We're going to head outside, guys, and show you around. And then we're going to come back in, close it all up, and show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the outside. All right, guys, we're now back on the outside of the all-new Cedar Creek Champagne 38EL. We're going to start here on the door side and kind of spin our way around the RV here. So looking up here, you can see all-new exterior coloring and graphics compared to last year's model. And even the early 2021 version looks different. Um, so whole new outside look. It's kind of a light grayish eggshell kind of color I guess you'd say um, so a little bit different look to the outside and again all new graphics um, frameless windows on the exterior sidewalls guys so it gives it that little bit cleaner sleeker look but these windows are also dual pane safety glass windows so you have two layers of glass which is really great for you extended stay customers or full-time type of customers Having two layers of glass just helps with some of the humidity and condensation issues you get from camping in the extreme cold and things like that. Um, so definitely a nice feature to have on the RV. Uh, traditional power awning that you find on pretty much every RV at this price point. Um, but it does have the LED light strip built into the uh, bar up there on the wall instead of in the tube when it's out. So you can kind of use it either way. The arms are tiltable and adjustable for water runoff. Now up on the front cap side here, you see that little black square, that's the dryer vent. You see when we were inside there, this side-by-side -side washer dryer, well that is where it actually vents out of the RV. Now this one was ordered with the optional four camera security system. And on this front running light right here that you see, that is one of the side cameras. So that allows you to see down the side of the RV when you're traveling. You have two exterior speakers. They're roughly about six feet off the ground here. A little round circle you see there and then another one over on the left. So two outside speakers. Then you have your little pet friendly leash latch right there as well. So you could tie up your dog right here if you needed to. Behind the first door right there is going to be two 30-pound propane tanks with the auto changeover regulator. And just directly below is an outside gas line hookup if you wanted to do some sort of portable grill. You can also see the six-point automatic hydraulic leveling jack system here. So you have two jacks in the front, two just there in front of the step area, and then two directly behind the axles. And again, it's the hydraulic version, which is a little bit stronger, faster, and a little more reliable than the electric system. Both are good systems, but the hydraulic is considered to be a better system. Another nice thing I kind of like on the Cedar Creek, you can kind of see here, the section down here is actually wrapped. So they do bring the metal down to the drop Z frame section which just kind of encloses it, makes it look a little bit nicer, a little more clean looking. Big pass-through storage section here, guys. All aluminum stud construction, again, on your flooring, your walls, and your roof, so they don't cheapen it up and go with the wood studded roof or floor. You have your central vac right back here, which can be used in the basement or change out the bag right here. Electric outlet, TV outlet, and you have a light back here as well. Now the big baggage door is also held up by magnetic holders instead of plastic clips, so it's just less likely to have something break on it. Uh, the baggage door is also thicker, better insulation factor there, and it has the metal slam lock baggage doors instead of the plastic ones. 
Now over here you have an electric outlet again along with a little outside spray port there so you can hose some stuff down. Now entry step wise you have the more ride step above step that you're seeing here. That step does have the shock assist on it so you can see it kind of holding itself up there in the picture. That basically will help you lift that step up and down nice and easy so it's not going to fall down and hurt you. Obviously it could malfunction and break so be careful but that shock assist is there to really help support the weight of that and make it real easy for you to do. Um, the step also has the little Cedar Creek name cut out in it and a little LED backlit light back there as well, um, you know, just to kind of throw a little night light down there. Large folding entry handle there to help you get in and out of the RV. And then you also have your model number, guys, next to the entry door. That's real important if you're out shopping, looking around at a dealer's lot. That model number right there is what you want to remember so that you know what unit you liked and you can tell your salesperson. Uh, also right there you will see the little uh, safe ride sticker. That is something that all Forest River campers come with for one year. So a nice little feature there in case of a roadside emergency. Entry door wise you have a little bit wider entry door. Um, it's about a 32 inch wide entry door where a lot of RVs are only 30 or 28. So a little more elbow room going in. There's a little peephole in the door. And then you also have the uh, touch lock pad there as well. Your little uh, number combination lock to get in and out. And obviously it comes with keys as well, so you can use either or. Now directly above the entry door, you also have your porch light. So just on this side right here in this section, you have your LED light strip, you have your porch light, and you have the step light. So you can really kind of illuminate this area at nighttime. And again, with the four camera security system up above that light is the extra camera. So that looks down over your entry door area. You can again take that security camera system or monitoring system into the camper with you, that little screen, and see it from inside. Now over here you have the TV, which is built into the sidewall section here. It's kind of a little pushback storage compartment area, but it's on a swing arm. It looks like about a 32 inch TV roughly. Um, so you again have it on a swing arm so you can kind of pivot around. It's got little shocks on it to hold the door up. Uh, that's kind of nice. So in case it's raining or something, it's a little less likely to have rain get onto the TV. It kind of acts as a little bit of an awning. Now, this customer also ordered it with the optional second awning. That is a Thule awning, which comes straight in, straight out. Now, in this awning, they put the LED light strip on the tube portion of it. So when the awning does come fully out, which is probably about seven and a half, eight feet roughly, uh, the light is further out away from the RV. It's kind of nice because you got this one further away from the RV and then that one up close against the RV. So you're kind of double staging the lights when you do it that way. Um, this awning also a little bit fancier awning than the standard awning. And this one does have a wind sensor system in it as well. Now over above the slide out here, you have the slide out awning topper. And that right there basically helps cover the top of the slide out room. And it kind of helps keep the leaves, twigs, debris, stuff like that off the top of the room. Uh, so just kind of a little, little less maintenance for you when you go to close up when you're done. Now down below you can see you do have dual axles. They are 17 and a half inch H rated tires or aluminum wheels. They have the built in tire pressure monitoring system that shoots a signal to the little screen that you can stick in your truck. Uh, so that's really nice to have that tire pressure monitoring system. You have the never adjust brakes, which basically means the brakes also forward adjust themselves. Uh, some brands of campers use a cheaper axle, which you have to either take apart or drive the camper in reverse and hit the brake to try and adjust it. Uh, so these are just, again, trying to make it a little more user friendly for you. And then in between the axles, you have the Dexter Easy Flex suspension system 
which is kind of like a shock for RVs. We're kind of going around to the back side. Underneath the back of the RV, you can kind of see pop up here in the picture, you have your spare tire. It's on a crank, so that just basically cranks on down on a cable, so you can change out the tire if you ever need to. Hopefully you never need to use it, but it does have one if you do. Now one of the other differences between the Champagne and the traditional Cedar Creek version is going to be this rear fiberglass cap. So on this you have kind of a motorhome style rear end. Uh, just a little bit fancier looking, a little sleeker looking than the traditional flat back on the standard Cedar Creek. Down below you do have a two inch hitch receiver on the bottom you can see down there. Now again, just like the Cedar Creek, this is not a boat type of towing hitch. It's not meant to tow a cargo trailer or a boat or something behind it. It is basically just a luggage rack hitch. Uh, it's rated for about, I think they said 300 pounds roughly. So you could put a couple bikes on it or you know maybe a kayak holder or something like that, but nothing too crazy heavy on there. Um, up top there, you can see the fourth camera which is basically the camera on the back of the RV that will allow you to see behind you when you're driving down the road. Nice ladder to help you get up and down off the RV's roof here, and that ladder is rated for 250 pounds. I really like their ladder over some of the other brands that I have also kind of talked about on my videos and stuff. It comes down low to the ground lower to the ground so it's nice and easy to step up into some of the other brands you'll see in my videos they're up pretty high so you almost need a step stool sometimes to get to them if you're a short person now kind of looking down this side here you have the other two slides kind of sticking out here we've got the topper on this room topper on the front room uh, in the middle of this room up there is the stove exhaust so that's where you're gonna flip the little flapper open when you get to the campground so that the smoke will exhaust out. There is a flapper that closes in there. Now down below here you're going to see pop up there is a low point water drain next to the frame right there that drains out the ice maker and stuff there and there's the on off valve up there as well. So that is where you're going to shut that on and off for winterization purposes right there. Now, freshwater tank drain is also underneath the here, just behind the axle there that you see pop up in the picture. Over here on this side, we have the dump area right there that you're seeing, along with the one of the hydraulic jacks there. And you also see the dump holder, holder back there as well. Now, right here is the on-demand water heater. Now, this basically is a propane water heater that allows you to turn on the faucet and hot water comes out a few seconds later. And it will continue to create hot water as long as you have propane. Um, so it's not a tank system where you only have like a 10 gallon tank and then you're out of water kind of thing. So really nice improvement if you like to take long hot showers. Now behind this door, I do like this door as well because it swings sideways instead of up. So you don't have to worry about it interfering with your slide out room up there. Um, again guys, thicker baggage doors, better insulation compared to what you'll find in cheaper lightweight style campers. Now here you have your docking station right here. And in this docking station you have both your gray tanks and your black tank up here. You have three hydraulic selector valve switches right here. This allows you to turn on and off the slide out rooms if you want to shut them down. Over here you have the cap light switch. You have your battery disconnect switch, cable and satellite hookups. Obviously you have a light right here as well. Black tank flush for the toilet system. Hot and cold winterizing bypasses for the water heater. There is a little sticker down there that shows you what positions to be in. And then you have your water pump valve here to suck the jug of antifreeze 
straight through the system. So it's already got all that nice and easy to winterize the RV. Right here you have your hose hookup. So if you want to fill your fresh water tank or use city water, you hook the hose up here. Then you use this valve. Right now it's in city position. You flip it this way, we're filling the tank. So real easy to fill everything up. And then you have your outside shower, hot and cold water with the little blue hose right there. Little black circle on the bottom is a cap that comes open. And then you feed your hose and your cable wire and stuff right through there. That way you can close your door. Over here on this side, you have the powered power cord reel. So you stick the power cord head in there and then you just push the button to help roll it up and store it up and out of the way. Then the door just kind of closes back there. The other door here has your batteries tray system in it right there. And as you can see in the pictures that popped up there, that uh, tray, basically they slide in and out. So you can maintain on, you know, do maintenance on the batteries and stuff a little bit easier there. Now down below is a little sticker there, you'll see pop up there, but it has some instructions on how the auto level jack system does work. Spin this door closed here and down below, there are low point water drains for hot and cold. Again, for winterizing or storage purposes to try and drain that out. Now, this unit was also ordered with the optional LP Onan 5500 watt generator. So you see the exhaust sticking out right there. Normally that would not be there unless you get that option. Now, on the side of the coach here, there is the controls for your jack system right here we'll pop up a picture of that too so you can see that a little better but that is where you do all of your leveling and also control the front jacks to help get it on and off the truck so everything can be done outside here now where last year's version you could do the front jacks out here but then you had to go inside to auto level everything with this new system you do all the leveling out here where you can see what's going on on the side of here, you're going to have some stickers that you're going to see pop up. So the first sticker is going to be the gross vehicle weight sticker, which has your production date, VIN number, axle sizes, gross vehicle weight, which is the axle weight along with the hitch weight combined, um, some informational there. So next sticker is going to be your unloaded vehicle weight which is what the camper weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line. Next sticker is going to be your cargo carrying capacity sticker, which is basically taking the unloaded weight and subtracting it from the gross weight, and that basically gives you your carrying capacity. Now, they're always off usually a few pounds because some of these manufacturers do include propane in there, um, so that kind of throws the numbers off a little bit, but it's really close. And the next sticker is going to be your tire stickers, which again tell you your proper tire pressure that you need to maintain uh, when you go out on road trips. If it doesn't have the proper pressure and it gets too low, the tires cannot handle the weight of the RV and they will blow out easily. So make sure you do check your tire pressure. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention, back there in between those slides is another security light up top there. Now here on, let's see if you can see this a little bit here, but you can kind of see the little infrared kind of lights and stuff here, a little blue light down here as well, where these are all powered up. So you could technically be watching them from inside. Step back here a little bit, you kind of see the front section here. Again, all new graphics and look on the front as well. Um, you have three LED light strips built in there to really kind of brighten up the front of the RV. Trail Air Hitch Pin Box, a nice feature to order the unit with. Uh, you have basically an airbag system built in, a little shock absorber to help with the up and down bounce as you're traveling down the road. And it does have the breakaway cable switch there too. 
Now in this front compartment here, normally this is just a large storage compartment and there would be a little bit of uh, stuff over on the right side there where you could pop open a little panel and kind of access a couple things. But this guy ordered it with the generator. So that's what you're seeing there in that section is the Onan 5500 watt propane generator. All right, guys, we are going to head back inside, close it up. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we are now back up inside the all new Champagne 38 EL by Forest River. And we are going to take a second, and close these slide outs for you. So when you do get ready to close up the slides, make sure there's nothing in the way of the slide out. Super important because they will get run over whatever you've got in front of them. So make sure there's nothing there. Come in here to your Firefly system. Go to the slide section. It brings it up here. You have extend and retract button. So we are going to retract. Now the first room to usually move is going to be the bedroom. And that is because it's the lightest weight room of the bunch. Um, so we're going to hit the button to retract and bring that room in. Now the bedroom basically just comes in and gets butted up right against the dresser here. Now the other rooms downstairs did move just a hair. Again, hydraulic fluid flows the path of least resistance, so it tries to put a little pressure on everything and then move from there. Zoom back out here a little bit, as you kind of see. There is full room to walk around here. You can come on in here, I could lay down, take a nap at a rest area or whatever, spend the night, Walmart parking lot kind of thing. You climb on over the bed, get into your closet, get to your washer dryer, that little uh, sit down seat area over there, the top portion of your dresser, fully functional, and the uh, bed here does not impede the door, where some of the smaller units, the bed door here, kind of hit each other. Again, full access to the bathroom, so you could come in, take a shower, use the bathroom, whatever you need to do here, no big deal. Now, down here again on these lower slide sections, we're going to continue with the retract button here. You can see the kitchen slides coming in first, and then it'll stop. And right down here, we'll zoom the camera down a little bit. You'll see the other room come in as well. And it kind of raises up a little bit because this one is a flush floor slide. So that has to come up over the main subfloor and then continue on in. And when these slides are closed, you can still come in here and get to the little cabinet area, your trash can area. You have full access to your refrigerator as well. If you really needed to get to the back and couldn't open it, you could kind of crawl under the dinette table or climb over the table or the counter or whatever. Uh, but for the most part, it's best to run this section out if you have to get back there. Now, a really important thing too, guys, make sure your leaf extension is not in. If it is in, that tabletop is out too far and when you close the slide, it'll go right through the side of the island here. So make sure that extension is not in there. Now when you go to take it back out, kind of the same thing, you're just going to hit the extend button up here. The bedroom slide's going to roll out, pressure's relieved off the other two slides down here. So they kind of creep out a little bit, but most of the fluid is pushing that bed out up there. I'm going to spin the camera around here so you can kind of see what's going on on this side. Now this time the big slide is actually moving before the kitchen slide. And that will probably happen a little more often once you get all your stuff loaded into the kitchen slide. Because you're going to weigh it down even more. all the way out. So 
So pretty quick and simple. And again, you can shut the rooms on and off individually by the valves in your docking station. Thanks again, guys, for checking out my video. Please be sure to check out CouchesRVNation.com. They are one of the largest internet wholesale dealers in the country. They will definitely save you guys a lot of money on a new RV if you're interested. Don't forget, guys, that are new, please like, share, subscribe if you're interested in keeping up with more of the videos. Really do appreciate you guys. Thanks a lot.